afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, master propaganda heroes like Defender of the Fatherland, off here to an exciting on one versus one. On Lost Glider, between the South, we got Shadowling, fighting here for the Oberkommand West, Germany, Deutschland, the third Panzer Division, versus the North, we got Imperial Dane himself, fighting for the Soviet Union, Socialism, Stalin, taking on the role here of the 12th Mechanized Corps. And we are looking at special operations, firestorm and scavenge with triple infantry versus guard rifle, lend lease and advanced warfare tactics with infantry, guard rifle and mine bulletins. Opting in here to a heavy conscript build here since I prefer that overall, gives you more mobility and flexibility compared to the penal to build start, which tends to be a bit too slow for my fit. Taste and doesn't quite suit my particular playstyle when it comes to the Soviets. But moving in aggressive within years, leaving the country and then secure the calf point, allows me to just more faster get an aggressive start. We got double foot goes out here for Shadow Link, who's also sitting aggressively with his foot's gonna be interesting enough, whereas the Storm Pine is used more conservatively just secure territory. Bit of a curious uh, opening capping order there, if you will. Another country's court being sent westwards here, and Guinea's coming eastwards, and country moving westwards to try and get into the church to figure out what's going on there. Third country's got on the way there for Mother Russia. There's points there being secured. We got the full screen court sitting out. And first shot's fired here. Moving here towards the church to quickly secure territory. I'll just go around and see what my opponent is up to. And meanwhile, we can see Shadowlink is just going to ignore this, which is definitely a, tactically the right decision. In fact, he might, in fact, be sensing my fuel point is exposed and hit straight for it, which is also a tactically very sensible decision. And of course, which I completely forgotten here. At least I didn't consider it. I didn't consider it possibly enough. Either way, he hits straight for the fuel point, forcing me to double back units elsewhere to react to this move. Again, Guinea's coming in here from one side. When you catch me, let's say sandbags. We're aggressive sandbagging there, by the way. Neymar comes to court to in the center, leaving that to the other unit to deal with him here. It's a bit of aggressive movement there, another Conscript ignores the Storm Pine, it's getting a bit like what he did here, I do there, instead of finding engagement I simply cannot win, which would cause be senseless, I move down here and almost do the same what he did, but instead of trying to grab the fuel point I just go straight for the cutoff point, so both players here looking to outmaneuver each other instead of catch the other bastard off guard, with the varying degrees of success so far. Almost got a wipe there, but sadly didn't quite work, meanwhile the Fulcher got a lot of free shots on my Conscripts, taking them down to very very low health. Then you just bring in there, folks. We're going to find out conscripts on several sides here. I'm not quite working out there. Going to need to retreat the conscript squad here. We've got all, enough manpower for another one, but I've been too preoccupied with what's going on here. Detaching away here again. Not really good engagement, so rather move forces over here to assist in the engagement by the eastern fuel point. And there you go, retreating from here as well. But it does stall the folks when it is there. And there you go. Finally, the fight for the eastern fuel point is so at least the first of many, leaving numerous dead and wounded in its wake. So up here we got country retreating, reinforcing in a few moments with a fourth squad there arriving for the motherland and the twelfth mechanized core. Troops reinforcing there for Shadow Link, who's up to four full screen discords plus the storm pioneers. And I push forward here again this time occupying the house with the full screen is catching that out in the open. And they quickly just pop into the house's blind spot and I just fall back. More rasping up north, they're going to get between the Shion Pioneers and Conscripts, slightly falling back here, troops reinforcing, medics are on the way to help heal, and there you go, point being secured, mines up here as well by big kills, he's likely going to be pushing for that fuel point again, in this regard, Shadowlink obviously has displayed A, intent, and B, also, you know, the fact he realises fuel is important, which again, not all players always do, so in this regard, mining the fuel point is a really good idea for me, so it's going to make it hard for him just to harass it, and hold it at the same time, making it easy for me to push him off the fuel point if he does make a rush for it. Moving in a squad, he just to help deal with the steering pine, he's keeping a bit off guard with another two country squads moving in there. Gonna try and flush out the steering pine, and open a western front there. And meanwhile, on the east, we can see Shadowlink is making a big push, that's gonna force me to divert forces from my planned big push to counter his big push, because he was able to get off his big push faster than mine. So obviously, I have to react to that. And in this case, I'm assisted by one particular fact, which is his big push very quickly loses steam and he just splits up his forces. Obviously he wants to seize as much air to as possible, as fast as possible, but at the same time, sometimes you just want to establish a solid front first and then sort of leave something else to your territory. This oh, come on, the rest of this is what the Kubelwagen is great at. And then use the instance of push ahead, it could for some all the squads here, and then the Kubelwagen could have sipped up securing the rear line territories. Instead, he split up his forces, which makes it easier for me to counterattack, particularly because the mine. He does manage to render the point neutral, and that's going to hurt my fuel supply. 
but it's not something you're going to be able to do for very long, and it's going to be further manpower losses for him. Plus, I'm still con sticking to my western push. Partly, again, I can do this to an easy degree due to the hole he split up and, you know, cost himself a lot of momentum. We got a second stream punish squad there for Shadow Link. Third Panzer to show this clearly sending out more hardened infantry. I got a support and company going. I think I'm going to go for a maximum to counter all this infantry since it's pretty clear Shadow Link is hitting me with a lot of infantry. And with all this, Fultz going to be using Steel Pioneers, Fire Storm, which I think be sort of one of the more obvious choices here. Sat machine guns, flamethrowers, open blitzes to support this, giving more field presence. I mean, these would be pretty strong choices there for Shadow Link. But there you go, fuel point cut off. And cutting off the point itself, going a bit further steps here than Shadow Link, who's only focused on the fuel, ignoring the car point. So, so far, we've basically just seen two players trying to outmaneuver each other and cutting off fuel without really committing to any sort of, you know, big engagements. They're not trying to, you know, we're not, we are not, I suppose you'd probably not refer to myself in the third person, to an extent. Might come off a bit of a, too much of a prick about that one, but. We are trying you know, not to commit to any sort of cataclysmic engagement on this. We can sort of figure out, we can decisively win it. So we rather trying to you know, catch the other player wrong footed and you know, rather try and get hit in the fuel race and push out for some light armor or well, medium armor first. But again, aggressive harassment there going on from both sides. We got the maximum joining in here, giving me the machine gun edge. Though again, Shadow Link very much enjoys the infantry edge. The question here, of course, will he push harder for it? I mean, again, Fire Storm here could give him a ton of firepower that could actually make it very difficult for me to defend against him. I've gone for Guard's Rifle, though. First doctrine choice here. Opening up for Guard's Rifle, obviously, but also submachine guns for my conscripts, which will certainly give me some more firepower as all these false grenadiers. And long term, Howitzer's Air Support and the KB 1 Heavy Tank. Nope, but I let the maximum stand out in the fire because I just, you know, figure he's not going to think I'm going to let it stand out there. So he's going to rush back his folks because they're letting me suppress them. Lost the squad here in the west. I wasn't paying attention. That was a bit of a loss there for me. Not good. But these things happen. And so you're also showing you at some point you're going to get jackpot with these kind of tactics. You're going to end up like me and lose a squad because you're not paying attention. But there's just too much going on. So there you go, Garth Rappen arriving there as he hits the car point. I'm just trying to kill more territory there, thinking I'm not going to let myself be baited into this. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And that's going to try and you know, play more uh, responsibly because, again, some players are just going to rush everything in there to protect it. And they can lose it. Of course, you shouldn't ignore it entirely, but a more common measure response can occasionally have much better results. So there you go. Also setting up for some tech up here. Versus Shadow Link, who's gone for the Battle Group headquarters. We get nothing for that. We've got a lot of full skaters ready for the next big push, which is where the Maximus Op is going to be quite helpful at some point. So there you go, Tech up there for the 12th Mechanized Court. Full in the run. Not the best maximum position due to the fence there, but still can be helpful. And there you go, Shadow Link getting ready for the next big push for the Fatherland. Full Skinner is marching out and hitting his car point again because Shadow Link. Does leave that car point very easily hit. So tank with tank command out. They could allow me to rush out a half tank with a T70. Depends a bit on what I think he's going for. And what I'm really worried about. So there you go. Guys, sort my up for Shadow Link and the third Panzer to be shown. Constantly to got the maximum setting up here. Will he be able to suppress in time? It will not. A bit unfortunate there. And that's going to be an immediate retreat here with the maxim. Grenades off here from the Guardsman and decent hit on the Sturm Pioneers. Doesn't kill too much, but still leaves them depleted. Troops setting out. T-70 still some time away here as Shadow Link throws his men into the frame to the center. Crossing past tombstones at the Guardsmen. Who do not have any light machine guns. Which only means they can't offer less resistance to the uh, folks going to use this. Shadow Link just makes a really big push there. Straight up. In fact, he's pushing right for the carve point. No mercy there. I'm moments away from the T-70 though. No, I'm not going for some machine guns because I want the DP light machine guns for the Guardsmen if possible first since they do have more range and that's the best the folks guns particularly get assault rifles will have a bit more, you know, utility. Once again, I mean long term, just getting a lot of assault machine guns going to be great. I want to initially sort of focus on the Guardsmen light machine guns. Might not have been the best choice though. <coughs> But Rice sending more force down, he's part of the Maxim. For some reason, the Maxim sets up here, but whatever it is, can't, you know, fire out much of my frustration. So he just keeps doing that. 
bit of a particular nuisance, I suppose, about this map setup. Van Hunt can now to protect a direct move here, forcing my troops to stay out in longer opening without being able to fight the folks going to the giving them free hits. Good move there tactically by Shadowlink, but ultimately though he has to fall back. And finally going for the T-70, giving me a light vehicle advantage over Shadowlink as he's got none. Also he doesn't have any anti-tank weapons. He could go for Panzer Shakes, but with all the assault rifles he's going for, he's not going to have that. At least not barely going to have enough resources for a Panzer Faust. So that could prove to be a bit of strategic unfortunate move there for Shadowlink. And he should be anticipating a T-70. I mean, that's what most uh, players would go for in most circumstances. Also, Sandbag's mind as well. Again, I mean, if you know how your opponent's going to move, you know, mine that spot. Comparatively, though, Shadowlink with the same emphasis on assault rifles and other bits does not have mines either. But we got the T-70 light tank rolling out here for the motherland, the Rodina. Maxim holding up here to protect the area there. Could stand even more aggressive with it. And there we also finally got the DP light machine guns up there for the Guardsmen. A very rocket light machine gun, but also that was, I think, one of its its own redeeming quality. It was in many ways other not that good, but it could take a lot of abuse. Folks, they've been flanked by the T-70, fought a gun and cracked machine gun flying away. Guardsmen opening up with the light machine gun as well there. Folks with Steel Pine is going about there. I'm trying to stay at distance so I don't get you surprised with the Panther Faust, but I still want to be able to push them back and hurt them. He's going for light infantry gun. His medium response apparently is not to go for a Kettenwerfer when faced with a T-70 light tank. And again, I continue just trying to stay at distance. In fact, I try to get behind them, cut off the retreat path and have a better chance of getting some wipes. But for some reason, the crew apparently had a bit too much vodka before the battle. So many Russians! There's like 14 of them! There's five! Oh, I must be seeing double. You're seeing triple! You're terrible! Oh, he did actually mine there. We go straight into the T-70. I've just pulled it back. Conscript's grasping with the cannon against the advancing German horse with the help to retreat. Totally fire raining down. And some minor progress in the west. The country not looking too good. German infantry they're crossing in the line of fire of the T-70, which is still having some terrible marksmanship. Following up with a field gun there because I'm overall not entirely sure of the situation in terms of vehicles. I have no positive confirmation of the battle group headquarters or mechanized, but it should have been at this point figured out. It due to again the heavy infantry build, so that's a well observational mistake there by me. I should have been able to deduce it. I wouldn't need the field gun. I should have gone for another maximum there, but I take no chances in this situation. And lastly lose that an opportunity to sort of punish my opponent for his infantry heavy infantry build more. But that's another thing. Mine goes off again now. Does more damage, almost wrecks his sandbags too. But there you go, got the SIS-3 field gun out for the motherland. A divisional field gun, its role was not just anti-tank, but also artillery. And in fact, it would be used a lot as artillery. In fact, taking part of the sort of large artillery batteries with just sort of mixed guns from the Soviets. Compared to the Germans, until like late war, basically had you know, straight 105 mm gun batteries, 155 and so on there, whereas the Russians just stick a lot of guns together and sort of fire them. But the rations are more about volume than anything. A big push here with conscripts, guardsmen. Stuart Pond is planning coming far from the sandbags there, but there's not much to cover, and they're about to get overwhelmed here. Conscripts supported by the guardsmen pushing ahead there with the submachine guns, DP lap machine guns, they're providing covering fire. There goes Stuart Pioneer to push back. Fultz was holding up, and I'm actually forget about the squad, which gets white. For some reason, I had ordered them into cover, but they decided the best place to be was in negative cover, which only makes the Fultz his job there easier, so. For some reason, something's been happening with the patch, like you order them into cover, and for some reason, they decide to stand right next to the cover, exposing themselves, which is very unpleasant. Catching the MD-34, though, and wiping it. Also, note I used the Hit the Dirt ability, which increased the rate of fight, then allowing them to do more damage, by the way. In this case, figuring I could maybe wipe the MD-34, if you know, it was so silly to leave it unattended, allowing it to automatically set up in the negative color, allowing them any better chance just wiping it before he realized what's going on, and that happened. So in this regard, I'm able to snatch away the MD-34, giving me more suppressive firepower to stop all of his infantry. So that's pretty damn neat. Still, he's got a good chunk of the map there again. He still has a lot of infantry, though I have the T-70 keeping check. No, I'm not being completely gung-ho with my T-70, because at some point I'm anticipating he's going to go for counters to it. 
And I'd rather not, you know, run into those on mine there again because, you know, unlike Lightning, German strike, you know, usually strikes for more times at the same point any player will, so. In this regard, you know, these mines are just going to keep paying off. So healing enforcement there, guards, MD-34 there being hauled forwards by Pushkin. You know, I think I prefer when we had to push the machine guns, shut up, Pushkin, and walk. Okay, now they're creeping ahead. Apparently not anticipating me flanking with my T-70. Which in part I did to avoid it, I can't have his head on. And this is why you're only trying to take broader parts again. I know some players don't like it because it takes more time, comrades. But, you know, it also means you're less likely to run into nasty things. In this case, they managed to turn about. those too slow with my T-70. But still was able to catch it off guard in the first place. Comes to slightly falling back. That's still running down. MD-34 guards and pulling up here. Comes joining in a bit of the fun. You also got a concentration in the center, which could push up forward here. Of course, the maximum is ready for them. Up here, reinforcements going on. They should be going on. And there you go, advancing into the MD-34. Kansk is pushing forwards. Oorahing. Pushing themselves to the very limits of socialism. The Banhan Granada still goes against the MD-34 in the house, forcing it back. And we can see here that Shadow Link is forced away. Also, it's interesting, no, most of the fighting increases sort of goes towards here, which is actually a bit rare for it. Most fighting from normal place tends to stick to the center of the map, maybe a bit in the west. But uh, for the small market square, it tends not to be a focal point. But because of the way I'm playing, and because of this, it's sort of, for some reason, it's just all funneling towards here. Which was a bit of an interesting change of pace, to be honest. Meanwhile, though, taking up, then going to bring up some tanks. I am planning the KV-1 heavy tanks, since it can soak up more damage. And considering the state of the map here, particularly again, you know, a lot of really terrible pathing territory in the center. I kind of figure a tank that can soak up a few more hits if things go wrong is probably a good idea. So healing reinforcement there. we got a spare punted quarter going up to cover the car point and the fuel point. Very strong setup there. So they find the MD-34 in the northern house. Can't skip machine gun there setting out. T-70 repairs. Could use the T-70 to flush out the front. It's going to do this there. In the south, we've got a few gasmen on watch. Partly just acting as a trip wire and also just maybe sort of causing him to think there might be more here, slowing him down. Oh, there you go. Quick hit. There we go. Hit the dirt. They really should come up with another name for it, though. I mean, hit the dirt, you know, just... Does we give the impression just you know firing off a lot more shots? Always thinking up here with the cons because they're in U34, hoping he's not using the church. He would prepare for the assault for the church, and it turns out he isn't. To catch him off guard, the folks gonna see it. Otto, I thought you were keeping watch at the door. I thought you were Ludwig. Ah, ah I want to go home. Shut up, Ludwig. Sneaking up here in this case to encounter the spare punted quarters was inevitable to be honest. But again, doing part to my own harassment, he's actually been able to slow it down somewhat, which is good. Though he can actually go for a panzer already now. We could aim for a panther, which would definitely think put a bit of a dampener on my KB1 plans. But we got the T7 there laying down heavy fire against the folks gonna do 45 minute cannon just tearing into them. The gunner, though, has not massively improved or sobered up, sadly. The can of opening up, supporting a retreat of the Sturm Pioneers, ensuring they do not get wiped out. Good work there by Shadow Link, who's always got decent control of the map now. Troops enemy enforcing. Still got no sign of armor or orbital from Shadow Link or a doctrinal choice. There are certainly several things I would say there's lacking from him. Also, he's flooding resources, which is really only to my benefit like flooding all these resources does not in any way help shadow link win this fight but there you go pants have on the way but there's still a bit gap that is called doctrine md34 sending out again field gun just hanging back i mean i have no intention to give it away like at the moment so i mean if there's no reason to pull it forward so i'm not just going to keep it on a third position I mean, the less my opponent knows about my forces, the better. T-70 good to go again. I really should do something about this house fast. And again, send the T-70 will flash them out. That's definitely, I think, one of my uh, 
bigger mistakes. And there you go, catching the cane over the T70, the conscripts, but uh, once more the gunner lets down Russia. He lets down Joseph Stalin. But there you go, we got the Panzer right there for Shadow Link. Three to Panzer Deep Sean, can't let him push back. T70 though gains. Vets only two slightly increasing his chances of killing something. Probably in part by just the driver getting tired of it and just slapping the gun until he's, you know, so somewhat up. And you've heard forcing up to cover the centre there a bit. Reinforcements got a mortar out here to put artillery support as I wait for the KV-1 tank. I could go for a fuel cache instead, but I kind of think some artillery support could do. Uh, Benefit me nice. We've got the pencil rolling up. We've got the field gun finally in action. And there you go, penetrating hit there from the CIS 3. Troop ceiling reinforcing. Max recourse here by the Panzer IV. We got a mortar out here, the 82mm PM41. Also here to provide vital mortar fire support there for the Russian army. And there we go, first K1 on the way, Clement Voryshilov, tank, and then a morsel in there just gets wrecked by the mortar. Death to the birth bourgeoisie! You're about 20 years late for that, Petrov. Just kill the fascists. Constantly hunting about here. t Sen is constantly moving ahead there. Gonna finally clear out the house, which again has been acting as a nice gateway between here and there, projecting the victory point quite nicely. I mean, it's been a pretty good investment there for Shadow Link. And again, my failure's just been not clearing out faster. In this case, there's too much going on for Shadow Link. Grenade goes off here nicely. He's got the pencil moving westwards there, we got grenades hammering down. Machine gun opening up, they're gaining virtually two for the Mullen and KV1 almost done here. Fighting going on here, but in this case I have to fall back. Reinforcement healing, further pressure in the south here. A lot of engagements actually going on overall. And the mortar just sort of trying to kill something, but uh, lacking uh, success. So far anyways. But there you go, KV1 heavy tank arrives. By 1944-45, well there would have think been a few left, apparently German reports were still mentioned that it could have been just confusing KV-85s with them. The real KV tank would have been the 85, which was basically just a tank with a better turret and an 85 mm gun similar to the T-3045. They very much still saw usage there. I don't think they upgraded the hull armor though. And there you go, KV-1 was the Panzer IV, direct hit from the Kenner for the only KV-1. A lot of hits then, in fact, taking it down to half health. Shot bounces, K1 misses, and then you're kind of push back. A further fun fact is, technically a late war, or K1 here would have actually had less armor than a Panzer IV by the late war. I think the K1 had roughly like 60 to 70 millimeters of armor, whereas the Panzer IV had 80 millimeters of armor. So the K1 being so heavily armored and apparently able to soak up so much damage compared to a Panzer IV is a bit funny. Anti-tank grenades ready, obviously won't be able to stop the tanks uh, going for anti-tank grenades at this stage is a very prudent decision. Probably should have gone for them sooner, but I was rather focused on getting up the K1 as fast as possible. But again, I mean most of the fighting is just happening around team. Generally on Lost Glider it tends not to, but because I'm the one usually deciding where the fighting happens, it just sort of naturally occurs here rather than the center. So that makes it easy to take, and now again with the west open I can hit the fuel point more consistently. Smokescreen going down here, but it's a cabin assault on the center victory point. Very good. Though, of course, in this regard, as always, there's this rule from Monty Python, you know, the one where you know how not to get seen. And usually, you know, don't make it too obvious. In this regard, it's kind of obvious where it's going to be hiding, so just begin mortaring that specific point. So in this regard, if you sort of smoke a bit further inwards, you would have more room to hide on, but because of the fight at the edge of the point, it became much easier to disuse where you were. And then more to that specific point. So there you go, Fultzkin is caught white. At the same time, the Panzer Sword going up in the east with Fultzkin in support. Striking at the T70. And 
Stops right next to the mine. Sets it off. The text damaged engine. Field gun there getting shot a bit. K1 moving in. Troops nearby. Raid support. Machine guns. Garth and whatnot. We got air support called in here by the Red Air Force. And I'm calling it in part because I know most players actually tend not to be good at using the anti-aircraft mode on the 300 quarters. I have so far maybe only seen one player at this stage using it. Fox has been crushed by the K1's mighty tracks. They're just getting annihilated. And the air support, they're certainly not assisting. Field gun gathering in. Let's try and fight the Panther IV. Still nothing happening there. Certainly again getting my Sturmovic more freedom against the fascist infantry. And there you go. Tank down. Infantry getting strafed. Panther IV bouncing off a few shots. Gathering in here. There K1 rolling about. Barely damaged. Still nothing happening by the Schwer Punted Quarters. It's third time the gun remains silenced against the Red Army Aviation. Following up with the second Sys 3 to help deal with all the armor. I'm anticipating here from Shadow Link. So that was a reasonably good engagement. We did a lot of damage to Shadow Link and took out a tank. That's usually pretty good. I mean, I lost a T70, but that's a lot easier to replace if I wanted to than a Panzer IV. Shadow Link following up. Orbs have done a very good choice. The one thing Shadow Link is lacking still is a doctoral choice. That one is definitely not good. I mean, we're talking 26 minutes of the game, and Shadow Link has yet to form up some kind of strategy with a dodge, and I'll definitely describe that as a problem here for Shadow Link. We got a sister out there. Can't be caught here by the Panther wanting to retreat. No point in its attack raid right? because it's not going to do any engine damage or enough damage. I'd rather just retreat rather than suffering needless manpower losses from time to throw the grenade and then throwing the grenade which just gets repaired away easily. Well, mine's down again. He's following the same pattern. You know, if that mine went off, another one's likely to go off as well. I mean, it makes sense. In this case, a mortar to off, though. I should go for minesweepers, to be honest. That's a bit of an oversight by me. Bit of an oversight. But overall, much stronger map control now. Again, now they pushed up here. Plus, again, that engagement really gave me further initiative here versus Shadowlink. So I'm just sort of pushing ahead here. The K1 is certainly not hurting, and now there's the Mortar, which so far is actually two already with five kills. Infantry streaming across the battlefield here. Troops healing, reinforcing. Setting up for another KV1 heavy tank. Another fun fact about the K1 heavy tank that was, it was actually really expensive to make and really difficult to maintain and had several flaws. For example, its turret if hit had a tendency of jamming, meaning once you generally figure out that, they generally just aim a lot of fire at the turret to just, you know, make it a lot harder for the tank to be used. Another weak spot in the early stage of the war was the treads, so generally a lot of tankers would quickly begin just aiming at the treads, immobilizing the tank, allowing them to move up the things could actually then penetrate the armor back in 1941 and then deal with it that way. I mean, by 1942, they began utilizing heat rounds just for starters to help deal with them, which increased the chance of knocking out a lot. When they, of course, further up gun the Stukes and Panzer Force, they had an even better chance of dealing with it. So some fun facts there. And there you go, second K1 there on the way for the 12th mechanized court. As it pushes forwards, for the motherland, destroying the fascists with the iron mustache of Stalin. More to continue to provide ample fire support there against the fascisti. MD34 setting out with conscript support, and we got some more walls. Got a maximum holding up here. Honestly, it could actually could push the fort to support my front line better. And there you go, straight for the fuel pump, which is actually quite weakly guarded. Good attack there by Shadowlink. At the same time, there's a force tank up the center, preventing me from even responding to this. So good work there by Shadowlink. As long as he doesn't lose too much in the process, otherwise, this is not going to wag out because I can just recruit these things. Shadowlink, though, remains lacking in a doctoral choice there. I mean, we're almost 30 minutes in the game, and Shadowlink has yet to make a decision there. That is starting to look a bit worrying, to be honest. Starting to look a bit worrying. Jenny doesn't again help him. I mean, he could have grenade assaults out. I mean, again, 
fire jump much much sooner could have done so much more fun flamethrowers or something else or you know spare cops all of a sudden within flitch jump gears command panthers grenade assaults as well like there's just so much here that's just not happening for shadow link compared to again i'm just sort of focused on my strategy i'm just getting more benefits in sooner than him but there you go 2k1 tanks moving about here attacking from the center also clearing out a lot of the debris in this case tombstones not hit in the country though by the panzer four that's going to be a wild thing unless i get extremely lucky which i think i do they're going from the north of kenworth is ready to deal with this armored assault from the rations infantry attack from the other side as a flank here the panzer four meaning the infantry can just attack from the front safely and air support calling this to further just smack things up for channel link panzer pass the king one here the lead one still Almost got my Ken there. There we go. Wipe. That's the second one down here for Shadow Link. Pulls the almost white on retreat and looks like. No, oh, he's still not using uh, the anti aircraft mode on this rare planted quarters. It remains as silent as the grave. Again, allowing me. Oh, there you go. Finally pops it. And immediately shoots someone down. But there's still one aircraft about. But really, a lot of people are not very good at using this ability. Granted, a lot of people just aren't very good at using abilities. Okay, one that pull back for repairs. Double engineer should be able to quickly put it together. And point there being secured as well. And we can see the shell link just keeps going for more Raketen Mavis. He keeps handing them to me. I mean, I've got now two field guns and two Raketen Mavis. At this point, I could... Probably reasonably well stop a King Tiger. here. Shadow Link though, 30, almost two minutes, and we still haven't seen a doctrine from him. It seems like he's just in the situation where he doesn't know what to do, like the campaign can't offer him any solutions, and usually, I mean, if you find yourself in a late game situation like this without choosing a doctrine, you might want to consider either improving on it dramatically or looking for other doctrines you might then actually consider using in the late game, because, I mean, right now, he's doing himself a grave disservice by not choosing a doctrine. Rakenov setting up the rather demolished house, but at this point I'm not going to be too upset about losing a Rakenov because I'm at full pop cap. And if I lose like this, that just means he's not going to get it back, so that's fine by me. Come squat there to slow retreat in the center, that's going to get... No? Oh, there you go, wiped. As I would say, we're about to get pretty filthy lucky there if that hadn't. So repairs going on there. Shadowlink, is he aiming for the King Tiger? Is he aiming for the Panther? Is he aiming for a Command Panther? I mean, there's only a few options there for Shadowlink, but uh, so far none are appearing. <laughs> and this Orbs by him not been upgraded either. It's only a bit unclear here what Shadowlink is playing at, sort of for a long term strategy. Mine's down. Well, he's certainly getting very close to the command panther, which of course could be what he's aiming for. Got the key wants to clear out the church. The orbs are done. Won't be so all but against that, that's for sure. They will not be very all but against that. So the centre has been cleared of fascists. Up north, Gasman and Mortar Cruiser are having a bit of a meeting. And the Maximum is finally in the rounds a bit close to the front line. Bit of movement up here. Could try and launch an assault for you, but overall, Shadow Link has been very much in the defensive throughout this fight. Again, the lack of doctrine isn't you know, particularly helping coming up with any great ideas. He's got the resources now like, for the Command Panther. He's easily got the Command Points. But uh, so far, Shadowlink isn't particularly even going for that one. So once more, the question is, what is Shadowlink planning here? What is he thinking? What is his battle plan? If he has any. Even though attacking here, the Shrap Hunter Quarters, uh, first going for Light Infantry, going to want to sign his artillery. So going for that one, I think, is a reasonably good choice. And they're going, taking out the crew and then destroying. He's attempting to, though... Uh, Apparently the gun has had too much of the vodka as well. We see Shadow Link going for a Yak Panther now. So he's not even going for a Command Panther, which could have gone for right now. He's going for the Yak Panther. So 
I'm unsure what the Seattleings plan is to be honest. I mean, we are 35 minutes in this and he still hasn't chosen a doctrine. Well, up the field gun, but that keeps the recruit. <laughs> Panzer all bits against required cover for the last man surviving there. K1 reaching veteran of two. Field gun recruit need to cover the K1s also in this area. They could easily call up stop a traffic jam if not careful. Very big one. Mortify there, raining down from above. The Ace Mortar Crew's back in it, or Elite Mortar Crew, however you like to call it. Shadow Link's Yak Panzer has arrived to blow up the Bolshevik tanks. Show those Marxist morons how to truly commit to warfare. And you've heard from moving up field gun pretty poorly exposed. He's actually pulling back my tanks further. This is a very tactical and advisable move I'm doing. And there you go, K1's being punished for it. This was a really poorly done move by me, to be honest, and Shadow Link rightfully punishing me for it. Very difficult, uh, hard. And there you go, another K1 mod, but still lost one. I might even lose my veteran to KB1 there, which is definitely not good either. <laughs> Shadow Link just continues to float, though. I'm honestly unsure as to why he's floating so much. We got a field gun. K1 just was trying to get a kid holding up. They got both a kid with an attack pants. What could be taken down? A lot of damage there. Main gun is out though. Main gun is out. Desperately making a very aggressive move their way while the Yak Pants escapes through other paths. Looks like he's going to be able to put it off here unless he hits a mine. I do have a mine there actually. Which you should not be having a machine gun right, right next to though. Yak Panther struggling a bit here with the, the terrain, but looks like he might be able to escape. More orbs on for Shuttling, and there you go, he hits the mine! He hits the mine! Jackpot. K1 desperately in repair, Shuttling though is almost 40 minutes into the game, and he still hasn't chosen a doctrine. I definitely feel like that is a major mistake there by Shadow Link. I mean, again, he's been able to tactically move about very well. There's been other plenty of good choices, but the lack of the doctrine is rather staggering, though. Air support rushed in here. This time he's also a lot faster on the uh, anti aircraft gun. A lot faster. Turn to the kid in there for there. All oh, guards are taking up position nearby. Yak Panzer quickly gets a shot off in the key one. And there you go, grenades off, wiping the kid in there for crew. That is another kid in the wipe there. Air support driving in. Obviously, I'm dropping like sacks of potatoes. Shadowlink is certainly not looking to be having a fun day here. Fixing up the K1 troops, in reinforcing. Pulling back like in a little bit. Their field gun could be recruited. Twenty-five kills on the guardsman. Need to pull the LK1 back there. Up north of the country, there's a force. I hit the dirt here. Start machine guns and just end up retreating. In fact, both sides end up retreating there. So Shadowlink is back to floating, and again, it just seems like he is unsure of what he wants to do. Like, there's this lack of a decisive strategic plan from Shadowlink. Oh, there we go. Find a doctor of choice here. Almost 40 minutes into the game. He does use this. He could have this out much sooner. He could have benefited from this much sooner. I would definitely have to describe this as being rather weak. Nothing short of rather weak. 
Takes out the K1 there, so the other one engages the Germans a bit there. You got take up this for Shelling. So he's actually trying to play for the King Tiger now. Clearly just wanting the Command Panthers reserve. In case I apparently do too much to him. Rather bold to leave just one Yak Panther to deal with the two KB1 tanks. Dion Pony is actually an aggressive flanker for the center. And this time around, I actually got a plan here. I'm just going to start trying to attack for here because obviously he's going to prepare for this. And obviously, I should have been doing this a lot sooner. But you know, in these situations, what you do is then, of course, you attack from another spot. And that's basically what we're going to set up for here. I'm going to be attacking for another angle entirely. One way is clearly not being expecting a large scale assault. And that is through here. And again, most of the fighting has been happening here or here. Though it has started here or here and sort of slowly shift towards here. And I'm just going to basically push the front towards here where he's going to be completely unprepared. And two tank weapons are prepared, machine guns, ready to support, infantry. And we just need the K1s to spearhead the assault. Leaving some elements to cover the center there. So you can't just you know, easily shift things from here to there. But just decide to push through to counter me. That could also be just push up straight for my calf point in return. That would mean his fair punted quarters of... Uh, the bad spot. He's actually a mechanized regiment, so he can't actually go for the command panel. Though this is some really bad timing there for Shadowling. He could cancel it, but might not want to do it. Either way, though, straight for the Shrap Panzer Court here with the K1. So we're kind of going up support here. Yak Panzer interceding, but it's not quite enough. There's just not a firepower. We got flares down. And there you go. Shrap Panzer Quarters is going to be taken out. No matter moment, got Orbs on foot. Goes charging foot. We've got the maximum of radiant support as well. And there you go, penetrating here, Pantherfuss, the Kedenafers, a lot of things going off against the K1s, but they just fall back towards the safe lines here. And the loss of the Shrap Hunter Quarter is going to hurt Shadowlink quite a bit, there's it removes one of his few remaining safe zones against my tax. And overall Shadowlink has more or less at this point been completely broken. He's actually going for a pair of Pioneers now, so... He's not going to bother with the Command Panther. At this point, it's largely GG. I mean, he's making some progress in these current points, pushing it and mining down. That's most of my force over there, but I can for example, quickly just shift the key ones from the west towards these. I got a decent force that can hold the line here, a decent force that can hold the line there. And do it again to a smaller force, you can't easily just push it all points. So I can easily just switch the K1s to where we need them. Got that KB2 almost letting three on the ace level. Fixing up the Yak Panzer. Almost got a wipe there. 177 points to the left, 212 for me there. And there you go, folks was feeling the wrath of the K1s. Almost got Vegetary for you there. Almost. So close. And Moya support. And again, now with the Shrap Hunter Corps gone, there's absolutely nothing that can actually stop my Sturmovix. Nothing. The skies belong to Stalin. Take that. There you go, doing a lot of damage inside his base. And now he doesn't even have the fuel for the Command Panther as he's losing victory points. So with this, victory is the Motherlands. And there you go, Shadow Link Surrenders, having deduced he's got no hope of winning this. So overall, an aggressive fight here. I think overall with a lot of maneuver fighting in the early game, the fight sort of slowed down and settled down more in the center. They became a bit more of a grind though, of course. I sl realized slowly, of course, you know, I had to push elsewhere, so that's good. The issue, I think, for Shadowlink was just there's clearly no late game strategy. Like, I apparently just couldn't figure out one. I mean, again, his stock food choices came so late, and there just wasn't anything going on there. He just sort of sabotaged himself. And finally, seeing this side, he wanted to go for the King Tiger. 
which was really just a weak choice in that stage of the game. But really, she's just gone for Doctrine soon. The sooner just pushed ahead. Firestorm much sooner would have really put me in a tight spot. If he just suddenly gone for a lot of some machine guns and flame for us. That could have probably actually given him a really good chance of just winning the game right then and there. But he never went for it. And that's really one thing that severely undermined Shadowlink's efforts. And I was hurting him. Well, you get a pretty good early game from you know, him as well as you know, just outmaneuvered me. And you know, we both sort of struggled with each other. But he sort of slowly gained the advantage there. But he just couldn't follow up on it and actually you know, push for sort of a greater victory. As I was just sort of slightly playing more steadily and all just, you know, outmaneuvering here and there. And in particular, in the late game, I was able to just better outmaneuver him using my tanks and sort of, you know, better engagements. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe to the friends, or share it with everyone. If not, send in a replay of the honor fight and feedback in the comment section. And if you like what I do, do consider donating or pledging on Patreon. Of course, a big thanks to all those who already pledge on Patreon. So thank you all, and see you all tomorrow for another stunning episode.